Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Kohalayam La Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Baracha Hakodash, which means all praises to Yahawah is the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shah is the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Baracha HaKodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, on the way of worship of the Father and the Son. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and sincerity, always in charity, who is rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. And um, who's being in examples, you know, unto the, uh, the doctrine that we teach, you know, who's living in, in conduct lines up with it, you know. Bathamayam wa amath, right? In sincerity and truth, you know, as the uh, elder Yada Zak down in Dallas say, you know, and um, this is Brother Mathati from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. And um, just uploaded a lesson called the Kingdom of Priests. And um, it's just going into how, you know, through Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Shai being made, you know, a uh, high priest, you know, and uh, also sitting on the throne of David. You know how he is a king. Matter of fact, I'll start with that precept. Because I, I just brought it out, you know, in the previous lesson. But this is uh, Zechariah 6 and 13. Now, this is speaking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. Even he shall build the temple of Yahweh, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Now, when you read up. It says, behold, the man whose, brand, who, whose name is the branch. So we can read that out of Isaiah 11, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, the fifth verse. To let us know who that branch is. It's talking about our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Right? And how uh, 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 he would build the temple of the Heavenly Father. And when you read verse 11, it lets you know by what his name would be. <laughs> he has the same name of Joshua, the high priest, during the time of um, the rebuilding of the second temple. Right. But the point being is verse 13. And I want to read 13 in um in the uh, NLT. It says, uh, Zechariah 6, 13. Yes, he will build the temple of Yahweh. Then he will receive royal honor and will rule as a king from his throne. He will also serve as priest from his throne. And there will be perfect harmony between his two roles. So through our Lord Yahweh Shai. We have been made kings and priests as well. This is the book of Revelation 1 and 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto Yahweh and his father, right? And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So through our Lord Yahweh Shah, we have ordered, we have uh, entered into the order of Melchizedek, right? And then the Lord said, he overcame and sat down on his throne. Those that overcome with him, he will grant them to sit down on thrones as well. You see? So he has a, a Lord's will we endure until the end. He has anointed us to be kings and priests through this knowledge, through the Holy Spirit. And that's not something to be taken lightly. You know, that's something to take very seriously, man. And I'm talking about now. Because if that's what we're looking forward to in the kingdom of heaven, well, then we should be moving as kings and priests in today's time. And what did I mean by that? Well, it tells us here in the book of uh, Malachi. This is the book of. Uh, that's the last chapter. I mean, last book I'm tripping. This is the book of Malachi, chapter two and verse seven. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Lord of hosts, man. So it says that our lips, right? Because are, are we not made kings and priests through Yahweh Shai? Our lips should keep knowledge. Now, when you go into this word knowledge, is the Hebrew word da'ith. And it says knowledge, as you can see, perception, discernment, and is wisdom. When you see awares, awareness, wittingly, knowledge, you know, you go to the root word, it's yadai which is to know, to learn, to perceive, to discern, right? Because if we're teaching people discernment, we must have discernment within ourselves first and foremost, because it tells us what the role of the priest is. This is the book of Ezekiel 44 and 26. I'm 23, tweaking, Salaki. 
Ezekiel 44 and 23, and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. So we first must have that discernment. Right. And how do we obtain that? First and foremost, we obtain it. Uh, I was just saying. But first and foremost, we obtain it. The same way the wisest king on this earth obtained it. It's the book of first Kings. <clears throat> three. And seven. It says, and now this is King Solomon speaking, right? O Yahweh, my power, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people, man. You see? You go into this word understanding. It's to hear, to listen, to obey, to be obedient. Right? So give therefore thy servant an obedient heart. Because obedience is what allows us to... Uh, um. To receive understanding. You see? Because it tells us here, man, it's a precept. Man, I, I already know how many precepts going to pop up in Proverbs, man. But it's, it's a particular precept. How many? 53 verses. <laughs> it's a particular precept. It's a good one. Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise man will increase I'm sorry, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Proverbs 2 and 2, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let me just grab this one. Let me just grab this one. Proverbs 19, because this might sums it up. Spirit just gave me this in my mind. Proverbs 19 and 20. Hear counsel and receive instruction. This is how we get understanding. Man, the Wadi Hawabasham Yahusha. This is the book of uh, Sirach 8, 24 and 25. And I started 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise, that Proverbs we read, attain unto wise counsels, right? But acquaint thyself with the Proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction, that Proverbs 19 and 20. Listen to counsel, take heed to instruction, so we be wise in our latter end. It says, for of them thou shalt learn instruction in how to serve great men with ease. This is the point, verse 9. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learn of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding. And to give answer as need requireth, man, you see? And to give answer as need requireth. Going back to the Malachi, when it says that they shall seek the law at his mouth. So this is how we're able to answer. This is how we're able to have proper discernment through the spirit. It's through our elders, first and foremost, like, like King Solomon did, pray. James, the first chapter. If any man lack wisdom, let him pray unto the Most High that giveth liberally and upbraideth not. And in so doing, the Lord is going to, right, allow us to have time to watch videos, uh, uh, to sit at the feet of uh, uh, whether it be the apostles, the elder bishops, or, or you know, the elders of, the, uh, of these particular camps, right? So that we can hear that wisdom so that we can hear that counsel so that we can receive that understanding. And that's what allows us to have that obedient heart is attaining to the wise counsels, man. Because as it is written. Matter of fact, it's the same app. It tells us. Every every nation ain't blessed with this, man, <laughs> you know. 
and then narrowed it all down, the majority of our nation don't even want to hear this. So there's a remnant, there's a small few who this, who this, who this council, who's been blessed with this council, I should say, you know. This Tobit 4 and 18, as counsel of all that are wise, attain unto wise counsels, and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Bless the Lord thy power always, and desire of him that thy ways may be directed, and that all thy paths and counsels may prosper, for every nation hath not counsel. But the Lord himself giveth all good things, and he humbleth whom he will, as he will. Now therefore, my son, remember my commandments, neither let them be put out of thy mind. You see? So this counsel, right, is what gives us that understanding heart. This counsel is what allows us to be wise and to give answer as need requireth. This is the book of uh, Proverbs 22. I'm going to just jump over a couple chapters. That's a good one, verse 6. But uh, I'm going to scroll down. Proverbs 22, I'm going to start at 17. Bow down thy ear, bow down thy ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thy heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips. They shall seek the law at his mouth, right? It says withal, union, united, ooh, together, together in your mouth. <laughs> to be fitted, established. They shall be established, man, in thy mouth, right? Verse 19, that thy trust may be in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? This word counsel, purpose, right? Plan. That I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that sin unto thee. You see that? The priest's lips should keep knowledge. And once again, we get that through attaining unto wise counsels, man. Now, of course, it's the men who teach us the scriptures, but it's the scriptures themselves. You see? It's the scriptures themselves. Because here it told us what? Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Well, what is our counsel? Let's grab a. Uh, it's, uh, Psalm 73. This is Psalm 73 and 24. It says, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. And this is what we're hoping for, man. <laughs> you know, to be delivered on those chariots. But in order to, uh, uh, to get to that point. We need to be guided with the counsel of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. Counsel, advice, purpose. You know, with this advice, you see, because it tells us in Psalms 119 and 24, thy testimonies, which when you go into this word testimonies, is the Hebrew word I die. Which says always plural, it says testimony witness, always plural and always of laws as divine testimonies, man. So it's these scriptures. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. And this is what makes our apostles and elders. That's what makes these men wise men. That's why these men counsel are wise, because it's according to the scriptures, <laughs> which is all our counselors, man. You see? And this is very vital. This is key. Because this is what allows us to maneuver in this present evil world, to keep ourselves pure from the filthiness of this place, man. And also how to properly guide the next individual. And not just in lessons, not just in word, but also in deed and in action, in our manner of life and conduct. You see? Knowing how to give a proper judgment because going back to that Malachi, right? That Malachi told us that the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Now, this is the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to start here at 17 and 8. It says, if there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, 
Then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which Yahweh thy power shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priest, right? And we're, 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 we're in the stead of those priests today. It says the Levites and unto the judge, right? We're, we're in the stead of judges. That shall be in those days and inquire and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which Yahweh shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. And that's the same thing as today. Right. You might have a matter that needs to go up to the apostles. Well, whatever judgment that's put down. Hey, 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 we follow that, man. Or it might not even have to go that high. It might need to go to the region. Or it might just go to the particular camp head within that city. Whatever judgment comes down through faith, we got to we got to we got to move with it. We got to rock with it. It's what we read in here. Verse 11. According to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee. Yep. See, <laughs> the priest's lips should keep knowledge. They shall teach thee. And according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before Yahweh thy power or unto the judge, even that man shall die and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel, which is why guys get excommunicated. You see, that's why it says it's aught between brothers. You go to your brother uh, alone and you tell him, you know. And if he hear you, you gain your brother. But if he don't, you get two or three witnesses. And if he don't hear them, you tell it before the church. And if he don't hear the church, you cast him out as a heathen man and a publican, man. Verse 13, and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. So the priest had to understand these matters, man. And as it is written in Corinthians, it tells us, you know, are, are, are we not, you know, uh, uh, worthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that the saints shall judge the world? I'm roughly paraphrasing that in the book of Corinthians. It, it might be first or second Corinthians. I'm not sure. Matter of fact, let me just look it up. This is not a light thing that we've been called to, you know. Let, 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 let these other cats in these other camps, man, let them. You know, where they 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 they, they t-shirt fringes, you know, let them think it's all about, <laughs> you know, beards and hellcats. Let them let them think it's all about brew walking and all about an outward show. Let them think that, man. But us here at Great Millstone, man, we gotta understand what we've been called to, the seriousness of what we're a part of. First Corinthians six. And two, do do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels, right? <laughs> Meaning rule over angels. A judge ain't always something to uh, put down, uh, um, you know, to punish. Judgment ain't always to punish. A judgment is also, like it says here, an, uh, uh, to determine To approve, to prefer, to pick out, to select or choose. So in the kingdom of heaven, we could tell this angel, go do that. And that angel to go do this. That's judging. That's ruling. You see how much more things that pertain to this life, man. And that's why Micah three says right now, it's talking to wicked rulers, but it could apply to us if we ain't in the right spirit, man. Says, oh, ye heads of Jacob. See, the Lord is calling us into a position of leadership. Just because you ain't the head don't mean that you're not being called to a position of leadership, man. If you're in Great Millstone and you're in one of the camps, whether you holding posts, holding a sign, holding a camera, you're a bit, you have been called to a position to lead. Do not take that lightly. So it says, oh, ye heads of Jacob, is it not for you to know judgment? In Wisdom of Solomon, in the sixth chapter, let's grab that. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 1. Here, therefore, O ye kings, he's talking to us, and understand. That word understanding in the Hebrew, it went to Shammai. In that first kings we looked up, right? Be obedient. O ye kings, and be obedient. 
Learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Now, now when you read this, it goes into how being ministers of his kingdom, right? They didn't, they didn't do the rightful things, man. We cannot fall into that category. Now I'm gonna jump down to verse nine. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. So we have to keep these things within us, man. They show with will be fitted in our lips. This is the proper counsel. You know? This is the proper counsel, man. Because let's go back. We was reading in Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter, and was reading, you know, the priests, how they had to judge the matter if a matter arose. But let's read down. Because not only are we priests, but we're kings as well, right? Now, this is verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise, Deuteronomy 17, 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom Yahweh thy power shall choose. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother, right? So it ain't no heathen that's going to rule over us. So that's how you know these men that understand uh, the truth, that understand these words, they're all Israelites, man. Right? Now it goes to show he must be he must not just be all about himself because that's what this world is about. You know, and Lord's will, I can do that lesson too. This is why this world is in, in disarray. You know? Because the rulers of this world, right, starting with Esau, with, it is Esau, Edom. We all know that. You know, I was going to say starting with Esau. But you got, the, you know, the different heathen underneath them. But uh, Esau, Edom, he's all about himself, man. That's why it says that... Uh, a covetous man is not satisfied with his portion. In the book of Habakkuk, it says that this devil heapeth up, you know, all things to himself. In Proverbs, it says that the horse leech, right, says, give, give. I'm, I'm roughly paraphrasing. That's all this devil does, man. And we cannot have that mentality because we had wicked niggas ruling over us at different points in our history. That was doing those things. But this verse 16, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as Yahweh have said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply for himself silver and gold. You see, so this is a king who's thinking about only about himself. <laughs> right. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy. Now, this is the point showing you that we ain't supposed to be just all about ourselves. That's why the scripture says, look, look ye not every man to his own things, but look ye unto the things of others. No, we don't live unto ourselves, man. It tells us in Romans 12 about preferring one another. That's what a true king is about, man. A true king, you know, cares for his nation, cares for his people. So how he move and the decisions he make within his own life, he's careful that it doesn't affect, you know, uh, you know, his, his, his subjects, man. And it's the same thing. We got to move in this in, in today's time. We we move according to the scriptures to the best of our ability so that it's not uh, being affected to the body, man. Jake out here, you know, just imagine Jake out here making all kind of bogus ass decisions. Jake out there living wild. Got warrants and shit. Then Jake got a brother's got to come together, constantly bond him out. Nigga got a drinking habit. He ain't never got his rent. You, you, you see, you, you know, I hope I make sense, you know. So we can't be about ourselves, man. And what the Lord is teaching us now in today's time, it man, it, it's something heavy, you know, because we're going back to our nobility, man. The Lord is setting us up to rule. And this is the knowledge. This is the counsel. This is the, the wisdom that's being instilled unto us through the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, and this shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of out of which is before the priests, the Levites. So the king himself had to have the law. <laughs> you see. King wasn't somebody that was just sleeping with women. Had all this gold and silver, you know, it wasn't about that, man. 
He had to know judgment. He had to know discernment. Which is why King Solomon didn't ask for those things. He didn't ask for more women. He didn't ask for more, for more gold. He didn't ask for the head of his enemies. Because all those things was going to be given unto him with wisdom. <laughs> you know, in Wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter, it says, I knew it's the seventh chapter. Kind, it's the seventh chapter. It says, I knew not that she was the mother of all these things. These things came to me with wisdom. That's why in Matthew, Yahweh Shah told us, seek ye first the kingdom of the heavenly father and all these things shall be added unto us, man. But it says, and it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah his power to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom. He and his children in the midst of Israel, man. You see that? So that our hearts don't be lifted up. See, being put in a position of leadership, man, that can expose, you know, the wickedness that was already in a person, man. But if these things are in the forefront, we attain to these wise counsels. It gives us a proper perspective. You know, man, it was something else in my spirit. Um, where else I was going to go? Because it talked about the king. The king has had a law, too. He had to read it, you know. So, yeah, if we calling ourselves kings, man. <laughs> calling ourselves priests. We, we, we should know these things. So we should be in tune. You're right. With uh, what it says in First Timothy, the fourth chapter, give attendance to reading, exhortation and doctrine. See, these, these commandments that's been given us, man, this instruction that's been given us, this counsel, right, that, that, that has been given us, man, this is the counsel of kings. <laughs> this is the counsel of priests. You know? And what did our kings say, man? This is 2 Samuel 23 and 1. Now, these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, and the man who's, who was raised up on high, the anointed of the power of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, the spirit of Yahweh spake by me and his word was in my tongue. The power of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of the most high. Going back to that Deuteronomy 13, it says that he shall read therein so that he may learn how to fear. So, so we got to be in our book. We got to be in our studies. We got to attain to these wise counsels. You know, we got to follow what did, what, what did Paul say? Be ye followers of me as I am of Yahweh Shah. So we got to follow our apostles today. Because they're in the stead of the apostles back then. You know, which is why the spirit on them to, 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 to do lessons from, from the apostles, the elder bishops on down to the, you know, the elders and the camp heads, man. What we, man, what we're a part of, hey, once again, it's not nothing like. Verse four, look, 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 King, how the King David described it. He shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain, man. That, 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 that bright light <laughs> says he shall be as a light. Of the morning when the sun riseth, man, without the clouds, dog. Clear shining as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Whoo. Just think of that visual. You know? And this is how we ought to be. A bright day, <laughs> you know, it's like brothers brighten your day through their counsel, through their knowledge, you know, but I ain't gonna prolong this, man. You know, uh, I, I know I had more things in my spirit, but the Lord ain't giving it back to me, man. So, Lord, will I hope this was out of fine. You know, I could probably, you know, add on to something later if the Lord give it back to me. But, Lord, will I hope this was out of fine to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai for allowing me to, you know, uh, speak these words. 
So uh, I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baruch HaKadosh, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to you, brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity. Shalom.